My name is Cliff Stillwell. I am a freelance photographer. Suddenly, one day, a strange green craft appeared on the Washington Mall. Nothing happened for a couple of days, so it became like a circus around the mall. A well-known reporter kept the world informed about what was happening. After a couple of days, something did begin happening. A door opened in the craft, and out came an angelic-looking man and a giant eight-foot green robot. As I tried to photograph the situation, the angelic man began to speak. I am clad too, he said, and this is Newt. Looking through the camera, I noticed a man in a tree on the other side of the craft. As the angelic man fell dead, I pointed out to the soldiers the man in the tree with the gun. That crazy man fell dead too. Now that the obvious master of the robot lay there dead, everyone wondered what the robot would do next. But the robot just stood there motionless. A magnificent mausoleum was constructed to house the body of the fallen angelic man. Everyone hoped that no consequences would happen because of this tragic event. For many days and nights, nothing seemed to be happening. I would often come by to try to take another photograph from a different angle. After several months, the government decided to build a museum laboratory around the craft. After some time, I noticed that there was a subtle change in the position of the robot. So I brought a couple of my photographs and compared them with what I was seeing. There was a definite shift in the left foot, so I developed a plan. One night after the museum closed, I stayed inside. I hid among the desks and cabinets in the laboratory. Late that night, my guess proved correct. Suddenly, the robot turned and began walking in my direction. He looked straight at me. I'm sure he knew I was there. But he actually opened the cabinet door, reached inside, and took something out and turned and looked at me again. The robot returned to the craft and went inside. I was dumbfounded by what had just happened. I felt brave enough, so I went over to the craft and tried to find the entryway but could not find it. Just then the door did reappear and out flew a bird. I could tell it was weak and it flew around me and suddenly it just fell at my feet. It was dead for sure. Wondering what this meant, I turned around and the giant green robot was standing in the entryway. I ran away in fear. That robot carefully picked up the bird and took it over to the doorway to the museum. The robot turned around and definitely looked at me. He knew I was there without a doubt. Yet again, he just turned 
and disappeared into his craft. I wondered what was going to happen next. Suddenly out came a fearsome gorilla and the giant robot both running toward me. The gorilla turned to fight but then fell over dead just like the bird. Just the same, the robot carefully picked up the gorilla and placed it over beside the dead bird's body. This time the robot looked at me again and started walking toward me. Yet again taking something from the lab equipment, he looked sternly at me then turned and returned toward his craft. Later, in utter astonishment, out came that famous reporter running. All he could say was, where am I? What's happening? He just said that again and again. I tried to calm him down as he approached me. I tried to explain to him that the robot would not harm him, but when he turned around, he just fell over dead. Again, the robot very respectfully picked him up and took him over and laid him beside the dead bodies of the other creatures. Though afraid, I just stood up and tested my feelings that the robot would not harm me. He just walked away to his craft. But I still just looked and contemplated what was fearfully wrong that night. As the robot stood motionless, I waited through that long, sleepless night. In utter amazement, I saw the reporter alive, or his twin, since the body of the reporter was also laying there in the museum. I tried to explain to the authorities what had happened that night, and that I thought the robot really did not intend on harming us. But the government's solution was to encase the robot in glass techs and to set up more armed guards around the craft and robot. The reporter continued to report what was happening with various quips and cliches. The government assured us that the robot was completely harmless now. As the reporter turned to interview me about my experiences, something strange was happening with the robot. As the robot began to glow red hot, the glass sticks melted away completely. As everyone else ran away, I tested my feelings that the robot would not harm me. Fortunately, I was correct, but I knew that there was going to be a terrible confrontation with the Army. was no match for the giant green robot. After the smoke cleared, I decided to follow the robot. He went to the mausoleum where the fallen angelic man was lying, his assumed master. The robot reached into the display case of the tomb and took something out. He knew that I was nearby, but he did not harm me, but just continued to walk back to his craft. He entered his craft and left the door open, and I felt courageous enough to go and look inside. As I watched intently, the body of Klaatu appeared on a device inside the ship. He got up and communicated with the robot. 
Then he came out and talked to me. He said he had many things to tell me. He was recreated from one of our recording devices, but now he was too weak to continue. The robot began to speak. The quality of your recording devices is imperfect. I pleaded with the robot to tell his masters that we were sorry for what happened here. The robot just replied, You misunderstand. I am the master. With that, the master re-entered his ship. The craft disappeared, just as mysteriously as it had appeared months before. We were all left wondering how we would convey the meaning of this encounter from other worlds, other dimensions. By the way, I'm some photographer. I forgot to take pictures of everything I witnessed.